Hey friends, welcome back to another pottery tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take a cheap plate that you found from the thrift store or even just from your kitchen and turn it into a whole set of tableware that is 100% handmade by you. So let's get into it. So with every slab building project, I'm going to start with wedging my clay and then rolling it out into a slab. I'm using these half centimeter thickness gauges here to get an even thickness. So my slab is going to be a half centimeter thick. You can use any rolling pin here. I've got this really big one that I love to use for larger slabs, but just a typical kitchen rolling pin will also work. And then with slabs, you always, always want to compress the clay after you roll it out. So you will have wrapped your plate in some thin fabric. Doesn't really matter what fabric you use. Um, however, it should be thin and not have a huge texture to it. And right now I'm just measuring it out and getting the right size slab that I need, getting rid of the excess clay. Make sure you're using newspaper whenever you're transferring your clay to a board. Otherwise, it could easily stick to your board and you can mess up your slab. So we're gonna transfer it to our plate mold here. And what's really important is that you hold the fabric as tight as you can so you don't have any wrinkles that you're going to press into your clay slab. So transfer your clay over and you can see I'm sort of pressing the slab in to get that nice curve. You might need to lift up the edges a little bit to let some slack in. And then I'm going to cut the rim twice. So for the first cut, I'm just kind of getting rid of the excess clay here. So you don't need to be too precise here. And then you're going to want to wait until your slab becomes leather hard. So here I'm just putting it in front of the fan and I'm going to wait about an hour for it to dry out. Otherwise you can leave it overnight if you don't live in too dry of an area or maybe you want to leave it overnight but put some plastic over it. Basically we want it to dry to leather hard for the next step. Okay, here I am cutting off my rim again, and this time I'm being a little bit more cautious with my cut and trying to get it as tight against the plate as possible. And then afterwards, I'm going to smooth it with my fingers. You can add a little bit of water with a sponge, but you don't want to add too much water because we want to keep our slab nice and firm. And then I put it back in front of the fan again. So I forgot to film this part, but basically you just want to let your slab dry out and then you want to bisque it. Now this plate piece that you've made here can actually be your final piece. You could glaze it up and make a bunch of pieces like that. However, what I really like to do is use this first piece that we've made from the plate as a mold. So I'm going to leave it in this bisque phase and I'm going to use it as a bisque mold to make all of my plates. So now I'm going to actually make my plates with my bisque mold. So once again, I'm rolling out a slab and making it half centimeter as well. You want to lay your bisque mold with the bottom side facing down. We're going to use the outside of the mold here. We're going to place that into the slab and then flip over the slab so that it rests on the mold. And you can see here, I'm sort of smoothing it out, trying to get that curve. What I want to do now is coax my clay into the curve of the mold. So I get a nice consistent plate shape. Then of course, I just want to trim the excess and smooth the edges with my finger. Once again, you want to let your pot dry quite a bit on the mold. How long you wait all depends on the moisture content in your clay or the climate that you live in, the conditions in your studio. So I can't really tell you exactly how long you need to wait, but you want to wait long enough so that the clay can continue to keep its shape even after you've removed it from the mold. And then I'm not sure how well you can see, but the edges are a little bit sharp. So I'm using my knife to sort of shave off the corner to make it a little bit more soft. 
and then smoothing with a sponge. An important thing to keep in mind as you're transferring the slab back and forth is you want to distort the slab as little as possible. So you can see I'm transferring the pot from the mold to a board without like lifting up the sides and distorting the shape. If you allow your slab to warp a lot while you are making it, it's going to warp a lot more in the kiln. So by doing it this way, I'm going to have the least amount of warping possible and have my plates all turn out consistently. So you can just let it dry like that. However, if you're finding that your clay kind of lifts a little bit off your mold, you can also use a sack of rice. So I just have a cotton bag here filled with rice and I'm setting it on top just to hold the slab down. So it doesn't kind of curl up the bisque as it's drying. However, this is not completely necessary. It just depends on the shape that you're making and once again, how things dry in your studio. So once you have all your plates, you can bisque them and then go ahead and glaze them. So I like to pour the glaze over plates. It leaves a interesting kind of texture on the surface. It sort of looks like mountains to me. So if you wanted to, you could just dip plates straight into your glaze bucket, but I like to do it this way. It also leaves way less glaze for me to remove from the back before firing. And there we have our beautiful plates. So you can see here what I meant by the sort of mountain shape that I get from the overlapping glaze. I really love that kind of irregularity. But of course you can go really crazy with your decorations and do something more creative than just simple white, or you can keep it beautiful and minimalist like me and have yourself a little tea party. So I hope that that was helpful for you. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to reach out to me here or on Instagram if you have any questions about making your pottery and I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.